Well now. Nah. Can you believe it? The coveted Super Meat Boy Forever DLC is here. It added plenty of amazing features to an already perfect game, making you wonder why they even bothered. Bless you, Team Meat. You spoil us so. I guess I have a sworn duty to review this thing, seeing as how nobody else will. Forgive me for being fashionably late on this one, I was busy doing just about anything else. I have a boy that follows me around and carries all my things. <laughs> <laughs> the level editor is the one thing that we all knew was going to be in this update. If you were in the panopticon of amazing and insightful ideas that is Tommy's daycare, you were very aware that this level editor was coming. And my word, it came. Sucks if you weren't in the Discord though, you didn't get a trailer or any sort of thing to let you know beforehand. This thing was in development as far back as at least August of last year, so you know, there was barely any time to get the word out. Ah! Quite honestly, I was 100% ready to make some levels for this game. I was ready to introduce this game to some good level design. Little did I know that the level editor runs like shit. It ran at a brisk 2 seconds per frame and I was unable to do anything. After a little bit, I decided to brute force my way through it, since these levels were just dying to be made. After I tried to mess around with the buttons on the main screen, it was as if the level editor was speaking to me directly. It crashed. Great job, Tommy. Solid work. I'm not sure what the problem with it is, and I'm fairly certain it's not my PC, since it's a fairly new one. Unless it's optimized for PCs that were built yesterday, I don't have any other ideas for what it could be. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for a patch to make this thing usable, and until then, those frothy ideas I've been brewing are gonna die with me. Sad times. Even looking at the tutorial for the level editor, it didn't give me a great impression. Is if you have pieces that you are gonna use a whole bunch. Oh my god, where is it? Like I said, the editor's not perfect, it's got its quirks. Call me spoiled, but Geometry Dash is kind of the gold standard when it comes to a level editor. It's all super easy to access and possible to make really simple levels so long as you have two working eyes, with everything being as simple as it can be, drag and drop style. It's the complex stuff that takes a fair bit of learning and maybe a tutorial here and there, but once you get it all down, the results are kind of astounding. This update also had to come directly after 2.2, which basically turned Geometry Dash into just a straight up game engine, with the level editor being so unbelievably insane that they started a which basically involves the levels losing their shit. <laughs> Jeremy. Combine those two things and you get shit like this. If I gotta try my ass off to make even the most basic levels in an auto runner of all things, that's just about where I dismiss this as a cluttered piece of garbage. I could take those ideas and make levels in Bird Tapper, but it's highly unlikely I'll ever get a chance to do that. It's also kinda weird that we get a level editor since I thought the entire game was built around having a bazillion levels that get thrown at you randomly. Why would there be a need to make new ones? Geometry Dash only has a few levels in the base game and they basically serve as a way to get you eased into the game before you go into the online levels, which is inarguably where most of the content is. That and the levels are consistently being highlighted and made at such a rate that the game pays for itself within the first couple of hours. With this game, there's always going to be more official levels than fan-made ones, so why even bother? Maybe I'm the fool. Maybe there's a sleeper fan base that gets on and makes all the levels while I'm asleep. Since we're on the subject, I guess it would be a good time to talk about- I still suck balls this day, even though I don't have to. The Forever Forge is one of the better ideas in this update, even if it is taken directly from to internets in the original game. The level editor is a Steam-exclusive commodity, so you make your levels, the council gets together and ponders they orb, and then they decide whether to add your levels into the Forever Forge on all of the other platforms. Think of it as the daily levels and the weekly demons found in a much better game, only except this time the level editing community is non-existent. It's a pretty innovative decision to include a level editor to a game that can barely pull 10 concurrent players on any given day, but those scoundrels, they really know how to push the envelope. I just checked the stats for it in the middle of writing this video and it's at 5. Also, that's a pretty big middle finger to everyone who bought the epic version on day 1, myself included. Why don't they get a level editor? Tommy's out here playing 5D chess, one minute he loves epic and the next minute not so much. What will he do next? If you were put off by the base game's complete and utter lack of levels, fret not because we got one chapter to play. Just one. One measly chapter. Remember when to internets launched and it had 140 levels that basically added up to around half of the game's base content? And those are being made by a bunch of other devs and team meet themselves just to tide us over while the level editor was being worked on? Now we just got one chapter, and it's from the guy who has last billing on not only this game, but also Wintermore Tactics Club. I'm glad he could take a break from dyeing his hair to give us a drip of his quantum game knowledge. I'm not getting over that, by the way. He's a 30-year-old ass man and he dyes his hair like a second grader. When you go bald in 10-odd years, I'll happily let you into the bald brother 
brother's clubhouse, along with your boss. You know me, I never hold grudges, you cocksucker. Anywho, I gave the levels a fair shot. Honest. Great job, Ryan. History will exonerate you hardcore for this one. The address for the Bald Brothers Clubhouse is not <laughs> The back door is always open. Oh, what are you so mean? Mm. The Meat Grinder is another addition that has me wondering why. More specifically, why not when the game first released? I'll remind you again, the entire game is based around getting randomized levels and playing them ad nauseum till you get a squirrel. Why add in a feature that just does what the game already does while adding no new chunks to the potential levels you could get? Doesn't seem like it would be a tough thing to do, so just include it at launch, not when the player base rivals that of bad rats. First thing is the daily grind. It's just a dark world level. Nothing more, nothing less. Next up is the quick game, where you just get a random level, customized to your liking, including dark world levels making the daily grind useless in record time. Needless to say, I got bored immediately. They didn't include any new levels, so the level design is not fixed even in the slightest. This does give me a great opportunity to more properly look at the level design. It genuinely surprised me how many times you can encounter a level in which you jump left to right palindromically to avoid the spinning cancer saws in a game that I'm led to believe is $20. The level design all around ranges from okay to abysmal. On one hand, you get the somewhat alright levels that consist of nothing more than jumping and punching every now and then, some of which may or may not include a skip, and then you get the tizzy bullshit levels where you're running into shit you couldn't see coming from a mile away, the aforementioned spinning saws in any and all contexts, and are basically relegated to playing tiddlywinks with shit you're unable to control, hoping that you can cut down on supremely mild lapses in judgment, such as, I erroneously thought they coded the hitbox correctly, and I erroneously thought I could go forward in a game where you have no choice but to go forward. Plus, it also gives me a chance to look at all the unlockable characters, since I was too busy playing good games to unlock them. I find it very telling that Tommy gave all the charm to his OCs rather than the main characters of the game that he didn't create. Like, look at this right here. The Mega Man ripoff gets an honest-to-god Macmillan face. That should be regular Bandage Girl making that face. And plus, some of the OCs get the old sound effects. The legacy characters get the weak-ass new ones, but they have no problem throwing them in for the new and improved characters. That's not to discredit the amount of inconsistent animation I was able to spot. Some of the other characters are fine, but for a few of them, I'm unable to get a read. Like how I can't get a read on Tommy's Wintermork tactics. For example, classic Dr. Fetus has a fucking blood trail behind him. This isn't even true for normal Dr. Fetus, who just has dust. Some characters don't leave a trail at all when they absolutely should, like Prototype Boy. Mega Bandage leaves behind the normal Bandage Girl trail when she's just a different shade of pink altogether. And why the fuck does the squirrel have a trail at all? It just looks like he's propelling himself in midair with projectile diarrhea. And some of the characters' proportions are fucked, like how Manic is way bigger than he appears to be in the cutscenes, and playable Dr. Fetus being smaller than the Dr. Fetus that shows up at the end of the level. They managed to miss this, despite Dr. Fetus being right fucking there to use as a model. Go into MS Paint and make his sprite like 2% bigger and you're golden. How the fuck does the animation in this game cost so much, only to be so inconsistent at every turn in the place you're going to be spending a majority of your playtime? Gavin told me we could all agree on the animation being the best part about SMBF. Why does he lie to me so? I guess I didn't talk about the one thing that makes these game modes different, beyond being slightly less annoying on your way to playing them. They're both using an overhauled ranking system. Master Windu's Ghost, say it ain't so. They actually did something new in this game, and it actually works? Kinda. Let me explain. The game is played with a score. The part time is divided by the time it took you to get to the end of the level, and there's your score. You can do additional things like getting the binkies and getting A ranks and S ranks to increase your score. The good part isn't here yet, there's still some flaws in the scoring system as to be expected with this absolute circus of a dev team. The S rank nets you the highest bonus you can achieve, 100,000 points. You will always want to go after this and never go after the binkies. The reason why is because the time and possible deaths you'll accrue to get the binkies will be overshadowed by the S rank bonus every single time. Even if you somehow manage to get all the binkies in a given level yet die once, you'll be at a net loss. Each binky grants 10,000 points, and it's very possible that you'll miss some of them. The level will force you to go forward without a chance to get it if you don't know it was there until the end of the chunk, which has happened, or run into a chunk with a binky that's time consuming to get, and even more so if you want to avoid deaths to also get the S rank. The problem being that if you still take too long, you won't get the A rank or an S rank as you didn't reach the part time. The only way you can get both the S rank and the binkies is if you somehow get a set of chunks that has binkies in extremely easy to reach places that aren't out of the way and have few places in which you can mess 
up and lose the S rank bonus, which can happen. The inconsistency of the level design screws you over in every scenario, and the best course of action is to hope and pray that the ones you're given have none of the aforementioned level design issues I mentioned previously, as well as a lack of overall human error, which can happen in this game, brought in part by the fucked sideways camera, inability to stop and think, and timing your jumps, punches, and dives too soon or too late by just a little bit. And I'm saying this as though it matters at all since you're not able to replay the level. Kinda defeats the purpose of a score, since every game ever made that features a score is done so with the goal of you playing the game repeatedly to understand how it works and to cut down on your mistakes, get further, and score more points depending on your retention of the mechanics and your skill. The only time this remotely applies is the daily grind, which you can play over and over again, but those are Dark World levels, so forget it. So the score is useless, what makes the ranking system so good? Well, it all hinges on one simple thing. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear it? It's the title of the video, so get ready. They fixed the A-plus times. After three long years of being a bastard child of the original A-plus in every which way and carrying into the spin-off that nobody played, being a tried-and-true monolith of how this new team has no fucking idea what they're doing, this update comes along and fixes it. You're given ample time to get to the end without having to jump and spam the punch every second of every waking moment while playing this game, and I had to do a quick double take when I saw just how much time you're allowed to get through. I did one level just going at a steady jog and doing exactly what I was asked without any omega level quantum speed run win or more tactics, and I made it through just fine, with the A rank. This took me by surprise to such a degree that I had to go back into the base game and see if they fixed it there too, and they didn't. Only in this game mode, dropped three years after the initial release when everyone fled from it, only here can you find a remotely good decision. Better yet, the timer keeps going after you die, without resetting it back to the checkpoint. This A-plus system is perfect. You could very easily fuck it up and not get the A-plus, I've done so a couple of times where there was a chunk that I got molested by, but even so, even if I was struggling and made it through with some punching, I was still able to get the A-plus. I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is the textbook definition of what the A-plus was in the original Super Meat Boy. You're given ample time to get there, relies on you keeping your deaths to a minimum, while some chances for fumbling and making mistakes are allowed. And you want to know the most fucked up part about it? They did this on accident. The new a system was made to accommodate for the new score system, which in itself is ass, but if they had included these par times in this system of keeping time, the game would have improved exponentially. We would also have to get rid of the S rank, or at the very least not have it tied to your progression, but this is a solid step in the right direction. This is where you would begin to make this game and other Meat Boy games in the future better and it was on accident. They're probably never gonna hear me say this, and they never internalized this as a good decision, the base game still has the old ranking system. In fact, this entire idea of the quick game ruins the rest of the base game, since you get a chance to see every chunk in all its basic bitch glory, and there's no need to progress throughout the campaign to be able to see all the worlds and mechanics. What are you gonna play the base game for? The boss fights and the cutscenes? If they had simply dropped this game mode as a standalone title, pulled back on the budget, simply make it an arcade-style running game with this kind of gameplay as its crux, and maybe add in an infinite runner mode that puts all the level chunks together, maybe a very short short story mode just as a courtesy with guaranteed pre-made levels and a story that doesn't read like a middle school fanfic, put it out there, call it Super Meat Boy Forever, make it 10 bucks at most, and have it exist as a side project that isn't a sequel but a harmless spin-off for a game you own the rights to but don't want to taint with overcooked, mishandled mechanics. Rather, make a small tribute to it that shows everyone that this game spirit isn't gone but simply resting. The original game can't be topped, so you don't attempt to undermine it and sensationalize it by hiring dipshit no-names that take pot shots at your editor. Low scope, low stakes, and nothing but fun, and a small treat for the people that were around when the original prototype was announced, but dropped due to unfortunate circumstances. Despite that, you carry on and finish the game in the best way you can, maintaining your former partner's initial vision for the franchise, injecting the same amount of charm and love that he once injected, and moving on to a simpler life by taking a safe steady job at Epic, coding chug jugs into Fortnite, and making a solid earning as you take care of your wife and child. The glory days are over, but a new journey is just beginning for you. You started off with one last hurrah, one last message to the fans that elevated you to where you are and bought you your $660,000 house and still keep the lights on to this day. Meat Boy made its mark, and so did you. Now it's time to lay back and start your next adventure. Or we can just continue to get shitty tech demos that fail to break even and lose their player base within a week, whichever works best. Anyway, that's pretty much everything this update has to offer. I guess I can say this is the final video I'll be making about new content for this game, since Tommy made it very clear that he wants to simply put out this level editor and then move on to other things. The passion is simply gushing from every orifice and you can't expect him to dump it all into one thing. What's even funnier is that this level editor didn't do a thing to bring back the player base. As you can see here, the player base spiked a significant amount when it got featured in a sale in November of last year, but the player base didn't change whatsoever in January. This game fails to pull basic numbers that much older games achieve with no effort at all. A game that started development around 11 years ago, went through an entire team switch, then took an additional 4 years to develop, only to barely stay alive for 3. If Tommy's word is to be believed about how much this game costed, then it didn't break even, can barely hold a room full of people a day, didn't win any awards, was absolutely decimated by reviews the second it arrived, taught everyone how to not design a game, was promptly outdone by 3 legends on a budget of less than $200, and most importantly, of all, gave birth to me.
Duck Captain of the Sea. Rest in piss, Super Meat Boy Forever. It's crazy that I was able to outlive this game, but I won't say it wasn't fun. I'm gonna go back to my life now. <laughs>